my giant floating head! <laughs> So I got back into Skylanders, indulging in all the financial decadence I couldn't afford to six years ago. Spyro's Adventure was the first entry to this Toys to Life giant released in 2011, and although it made popular the concept of toys communicating with video games, it didn't invent it. That obscure honour goes to three toy brands before it, UB Funky's been the least difficult to find info about. Toys to Life nowadays use near field communication, better known as NFC, to access the toys information and send it to the game's console. What makes Skylanders toys appealing to many is that you can store your figure's progress on the chips stored within it. No, no not those chips John Bon! To give you the most accurate review I can, I'll be looking at this from the POV of when I first played it. Some figures from later games may be shown here, but so long as they work in the original I don't feel like I'm breaking the arbitrary overly strict rules that I set myself. I'm also not going into the details about Spyro Kingdom or other canned projects that made Skylanders what it is. There's that many rumours and false facts that it's hard to find out the truth, that and there's many people out there far better qualified to talk about such things. I mean who knows, maybe I'll do a separate video going into those theories at a later date. But for now, you're here for a Spyro's adventure of you, not my blathering. And I pity you if you watch the rest of this video. Fear it! Fear my giant floating toilet! Skylander's Sparrow's adventure was sold for £60 in the UK, $70 in the US, and the woefully named starter pack. You got the complete game, a portal of power for your toys, and three figures, Spyro, Gilgrunt, and Trigger Happy. Included also were trading cards for use in the browser game Skylanders Universe, and a poster showing how little of the game you got for the generous offering you forked over. You'd feel pretty forked over yourself if you saw that you still had 29 other characters to get at $7.99 a pop. At best. Four of them were locked into expansions called Avenger Packs, and you'd have to cough up anywhere between £15 and £25 for. I still remember getting Pirate Seas for just under 30 quid from Argos and how livid I was at how short that adventure was. It won't be spared from downloadable discontent. Mark my words. But in all fairness, the figures are really well crafted, even if some of them are derpy. Looking at you, Skyro. And what few that are aesthetically unpleasing like Stump, Smash or Bash turn out to be blessing in disguise with high health bars and heavy hits. But what is Skylanders all about, save for trying to look more avaricious than Games Workshop? The game's universe draws in children and grown-ups alike by telling us whatever we imagine can come to life or shape the Skylands, a distant world of floating islands and mystical beasts. All seems well at first until CHAOS! An evil portal master uses the power of the darkness No, no, not that darkness! To send the Skylanders on a one-way trip to hell and back. Well, I say hell, they're blasted from their homeworld and sent to ours, the land of the Portal Masters. As Portal Masters, we can guide the Skylanders to the pieces of the Core of Light, the only weapon that can beat back the darkness. Not that kind. Skylanders is a pseudo-dungeon crawler with fixed to camera angles to get you following the linear routes, but those who venture out of these boundaries will find treasure and more. Loot comes in the form of trinkets and golden treasures used to purchase new abilities and upgrades. Gear is confined to hats, increasing the limited number of stats to keep things simple and effective, but Skylanders rewards skill in your choice of character rather than the boring UI elements and number crunching. Even for children, the game is a cakewalk with some bosses being hectic and punishing. This is mostly because the game design favours high damage numbers over mobility. Spyro's adventure and all of the characters within feel like they could do with being that little bit faster to make navigation less ploddy and combat exciting. While Trigger Happy is a zippy character, his small frame only permits him to go so far in so little time. Not to mention that some of his weapons like his golden coin gatling gun or his pot of gold can time down the spot, making talents that boost this less effective than one might think. Gilgrunt may be a scaly slugger, but his jetpack ability is eventually what makes him fun. Or it would be if I were able to turn and aim easily while using it. And Spyro... Oh lord, what have they done to you? His attacks are average until he chooses one of the two skill trees, and his charge slides off enemies, making him rather dissatisfying. 
I should just point out now that if you want this game purely for Spyro, you're gonna be disappointed, although his flame attacks at the end of that talent tree make him a lot more tolerable. Leveling up has little impact on your characters, the most it does is buff your health pool, and this becomes useful in heroic challenges more than anything else. Heroic challenges being tough trials that provide a permanent boost to stats, and you unlock a unique one for every character you own. Heroic challenge complete. Excellent job. Wow! Didn't think you had it in ya! Getting back to progression, you can have a level 1 character, but if they have money, they can buy every ability up to the last one, provided they have their soul gem. Oh boy, soul gems. Soul gems unlock an ability for Skylanders when you find them, even if you don't own the specific character. I find it a subtle ploy to get people to buy more figures when by default it tells you to preview the figure's gameplay upon collecting the gem. This never happens with any other menu confirmation though. Still, you bust your hump trying to get it, you might as well find out what you're missing out on. <laughs> Even if you're not convinced to buy more figures at that point, the game taunts you by ransoming off content through the elemental mechanic. There's eight elements in total and four characters of each element. In order to see all the elemental gates and get the most rewards, you need a minimum of one Skylander per element. You already start with magic, tech and water, so you can get bonus XP and loot while using Spyro, Trigger, Happy and Gilgrunt in their respective zones. But to access the glory of bounce pads and block puzzles, you need that element to open elemental gates. This is where the vast majority of your hats and soul gems come from, and you're not guaranteed a soul gem for a character of the same element as that gate. There are bonuses to some elements. Water characters can swim, earth characters can break rocks without a pickaxe, and fire characters can move safely on lava. They add an extra layer of value and almost justify the element idea, but such times when you'll use these gimmicks are rare. It's also a good idea to have a number of figures handy anyway. When one dies, you can't use it again until the level is reset or completed, or you return to the hub. One Skylander equals one life, but you can swap them out easily mid-combat tag team style. This makes the already competent combat more fluid, and it ensures that all your Skylanders will have a share of the loot and XP. You'll definitely need to swap them out as, while they are all great, there's no one-size-fits-all character. Plus the variety in enemies and their strategies will call for different means of attack. And I do mean attack, there's not much in the way of healing abilities, only food drops when you're low on health. Or if you're into defensive play with sword and board, it's chop chop or stop stop. Invisibility and support are also limited to single toys, and without seeing previews or their skill paths, you won't know who they are. Tanking is just having a high health pool and AoE in Spyro's adventure, further alienating players who want depth and difficulty. Thankfully, the three characters in your starter pack will fill most of your desired roles and playstyles, but you'll only just get them to level 10 by the final chapter, so having more figures may not be the best idea after all. Still, Skylanders encourages and rewards replay value. Not only is it fun to explore this vast world and go back to your favourite stories, you can learn new ways to play recent and quote-unquote classic characters. I didn't have much desire to replay the game back in 2011, burnt out by the cost and availability of the figures, but now more than ever do I want to play it over and over to return to secrets I missed and zones unexplored. In between all of this is the progressively growing hub, revealing more zones and characters as you play on. It's a pity you can't revisit all the levels from here though, you know, like in a Spyro the Dragon game. The one that made hubs the most universally loved thing about platform games, I oh, forget it. Fear my giant floating time! Though Skylanders hasn't aged well and there were better looking games at the time, the art style is tremendous. But I guess that's because I'm a tree! <laughs> at a time where games aimed towards children were bland and full of poorly told life lessons, Skylanders does what a game aimed at this audience should do and make great use of its colour palette. Plus, the levels you go to are memorable, even if you might not want to remember after mucking about three times to get the elemental MacGuffin. As for the figures themselves, they don't do justice to how awesome they look and sound in game. My only complaint besides the new look for Spyro is how Chop Chop and Hex's limbs are really fragile and don't demand the cost of other better built figures in my opinion. Now, the soundtrack is mostly light, with little in the way of heavy beats or electrifying synth outside the boss battles. Mostly, it's just the main theme remixed in some fashion, which is more noticeable in the elemental gate areas. 
And to be quite honest, even though I always am, it doesn't need to be any heavier. The music takes its time, as should you when navigating these large, lengthy levels. The voice acting is... Okay, it's not offensive in its delivery, but some of the actors besides those who play Flynn and Carly could have put a lot more effort into their performance. The phoned in acting may not be noticeable to kids, but adults will recognise it in a heartbeat and maybe even find cutscenes jarring. Finally, how could I have made it this far without mentioning Richard Horvitz as CHAOS?! Words fail me, so I'll let him speak for himself. No, why? Why? Because the darkness is spreading, Glumshanks! No matter their feeble attempts to rebuild Eon's machine, I am still winning! <laughs> Where's the rest of it? I said earlier that I don't recommend this if you're looking for a Spyro game. That remains true, I'm not pleased that Spyro was used for the cynical purpose of selling this game, but I am pleased that the IP grew thanks to his involvement. I can only hope that it didn't come at the cost of his future, but I guess we'll have to wait until 2018 for his 20th anniversary. And to be perfectly honest, if Skylanders is to become the retirement home of video game mascots, I can't think of anywhere better. I mean, would you rather Spyro died with the TLOS trilogy? <laughs> Oh, come on! But if you want a laid-back role-playing game with light combat and progression, as well as charming and memorable characters, you've come to the right place. Spyro's Adventure doesn't beat you over the head with the idea that it exists only to sell toys. The story is a good one and it's well told, and the missions aren't dragged out to milk out all the joy of the character so you can buy more. If you've had the slightest curiosity about Spyro's Adventure but not been able to afford it, I fully recommend giving it a try now. The starter pack is super cheap, as are the individual figures, however the best part is that any characters in this game can be used in future Skylander sequels. Okay, um, he doesn't want to come out, I'm afraid. <laughs>